if you get got or you get had because your recruiter said A, B, C and you found out it was X, Y, Z, you are either really naive or you are freaking dumb, stupid. I'm leaning towards the latter. Hero! What's up everybody? Welcome back here to Team Sports and if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Here I post a ton of Army basic training tips, recruiting, and other unrelated videos to include going live weekly to address your most desired questions and concerns, typically on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, my name is Lewis, your local New York Army National Guard's full-time recruiter and part-time drill sergeant. Thank you so much for being here and let's get started. Do recruiters really lie to you? I mean, do they really? To be brief, in general, most recruiters do not lie. Why? Because in today's day and age, information is literally at your fingertips. We have Google, YouTube, Reddit, and other online blogs at your fingertips that you can type in there your particular question or do your research or to gain insights and opinions about joining the military. Some of it accurate. Nice. And some of it not so accurate. Ouch. But you're here on Team Swartz and I got you covered. Hey. Reddit is filled with complaints about how their recruiter lied to them, misled them, or stretched the truth. It is going viral on TikTok where people are like, if your recruiter is here for you right now, what would you tell them? In my professional opinion, it is the applicant's fault. Yes, I said it, but hear me out. Yes, recruiters should never lie. Never, ever should a recruiter lie to their applicant or mislead them or to stretch the truth more to follow. But at the end of the day, it is the applicant's fault. Recruiting tactics in like the early 2000s, right before 9-11, in the beginning, in the middle portion on the war on terror, recruiting environment was extremely toxic. My experience in dealing with, at that time, as a high school senior, right, back in 2000, going into 2001, I dealt with a handful of active duty Marine Corps recruiters and active duty Army recruiters. And they were toxic ASF. Typical used car salesman, high sales pressure. My active duty US Army recruiter actually went to the extent to promise me that if I enlisted and contracted through them that I would be promised, verbally of course, <laughs> that I would receive a four-wheeler, all-terrain vehicle. That is nuts. He was straight up lying. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Back then, recruiters would tell you whatever you wanted to hear. Whether you were gonna get a free house. Liar. A free car. Liar. You weren't gonna get deployed. Liar. You were never going to combat. Liar. Whatever motivated you. We actually had in like, I wanna say between 2004 to 2008, we had undercover journalists that would pose as an applicant in the form that they wanted to join the military and film their encounter with active duty recruiters. And I mean, this was jaw dropping, horrendous. Recruiters blatantly lied on camera stating that you would never get deployed, that you would never go to combat. <laughs> and some even said that we were not even at war, <laughs> which was crazy to me. The fact of the matter is as a service member, whether you're guard reserve part-time or an active duty soldier, full-time, at some point when you meet that threshold, you will qualify for the VA home loan or the Veterans Affairs home loan. And what that will do for you, it will eliminate the down payment and whatever your credit score is at that time, lock you into that rate for life. Even if your credit score plummets, you file for bankruptcy, you're good to go. Or if you have a family and you're on active duty, you can either stay into family housing, whether it's an apartment or a house on base, or you will be assigned off base housing and leverage what we call BAH, basic allowance for housing, which means that the army or the military will pay for your housing up to a certain rate. Even if your rent is below that maximum rate, you will pocket essentially the rest of that money. Again, you don't own your home or your apartment or what have you, but the army will be paying for or offsetting the costs or expenses for your rent or your mortgage. If you are a financially responsible soldier where you budget your money, you live frugally, you build your credit, and you work your money for you, 
not against you, you can eventually get a good loan at a decent rate, if needed. Live beneath your means, not above your means. Please do not be that typical active duty soldier that once they get out of the training environment by completing their AIT or their OSA, that the first thing they do is they go out and buy a very, very expensive vehicle like a brand new Mustang, Charger, or what have you. <laughs> the memes for this are strong. Do not waste your money on that. Get a decent car at a lower price to get you from point A to point B. Living beneath your means means that you will have a less stressful lifestyle and a more enjoyable experience in the military or in life in general. Throughout Army basic training and when you get to your first unit of assignment and when you exit the military, you will receive finance classes. Pay attention and write down some notes. It will benefit you the most if you live frugally, you maintain a budget, and you are financially responsible. Please pay attention to these classes. Again, majority of recruiters will not lie to you, but some of them will stretch the truth. If you were promised something at time of enlistment and you did not sign an addendum or a document guaranteeing you X, Y, Z, whatever you were verbally promised by your recruiter or the guidance counselor and you did not sign for it, it does not exist. If you get into the service and your expectation of ABC is not met and you did not do a basic research, you failed yourself. If you get got or you get had because your recruiter said A, B, C and you found out it was X, Y, Z, you are either really naive or you are freaking dumb, stupid. I'm leaning towards the latter. In my professional opinion, I feel that it is extremely rare that a recruiter will decide to lie to their applicant knowing darn well that a smart person, a smart applicant, will do a basic search and fact check their recruiter. I suggest that you start your research by going on to their official pages. If you're interested in checking out the National Guard, nationalguard.com. You want to learn more about the Army Reserve or the Active Duty Army, go to goarmy.com. Links will be down in the description area for you to peep at. Please, do your research. Do not take face value on whatever your recruiter tells you without fact checking your recruiter. Talk to in service or prior service individuals who previously served in the military, but take it with a grain of salt. A service member, past or present, will either love it, hate it, or be indifferent. Nine out of 10 times, the soldier or service member who hates or hated their experience within the military is because their recruiter either A, lied to them, which is not really common, but more than likely stretched the truth and sold them on an expectation that was not met when they finally got through the training environment and at their first duty station, which is why research on your part is your responsibility. Make a well-informed decision and know this, if you don't sign for it, it does not exist. The United States Army does not give two Fs what your verbal agreement or verbal promises from your recruiter gave to you. If you get had or you get got by your recruiter, either by a straight up lie or stretching the truth and you failed yourself doing your due diligence, your responsibility of doing your research and knowing exactly what it is that you're about to get into as much as possible, talking to family members or friends or someone who is in service or prior service, and you get into this contract by joining the United States Army and you failed yourself, you are a special kind of stupid. This is not a contract like signing up for T-Mobile or AT&T when you sign up a year contract or whatnot, right? <laughs> like this is a life changing decision and should not be taken lightly and you should not just go in blind. You need to do your research and to make good and better decisions every day. Otherwise, you are a special kind of stupid. The internet has literally existed since the late 90s and it's only been getting better ever since. And with that being said, there is no excuse, no reason, zero reason or excuse 
to get into the military just to find out that you were lied to or misled at best case scenario. You only have one life to live. Make the best of it. Make good or better decisions every single day. Improve yourself by 1% every single day. Join for your reasons and your reasons alone. Fact check, research, and make a good, well-informed decision. We're not for everybody. We want you if you're otherwise eligible, but do right by yourself. I recently did a video on do not join the United States Army until you watch this video first. I'll post a card right up here or down in the description area for you to go check out. And that will go into grave detail on how to position yourself, research and all that good stuff to help you make a well-informed decision so that you join for your reasons and your reasons alone and to make a better decision, whether that is to join, go to a different branch of service or not at all. So if you've already enlisted, what tips and tricks do you have for an applicant who is going to talk to their recruiter? And if you ha had an experience where your recruiter lied to you, let me know in the comment section. If your recruiter was an honest one, let me know that too. If you made it this far into the video, drop a hashtag Team Swords down in the comment section letting me know it's you and my ride or die, real MVP, Team Swords squad member. Like this video, smash it if that's something you're into because that is what helps the algorithm with YouTube to push it out to others so I can help them as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really do appreciate you getting to this point of the video. And with that being said, stay blessed, be good, and I'll see you in the next video. Wait a minute, like this video and follow me on social. And while you're at it, go ahead and uh, check out one of my other videos right over here. Just, just, just pick one. They're pretty cool. I mean, I liked it. I mean, I mean, I was in it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I teach you something. <laughs>